welcome to Teachers Off Duty. If you've never listened with us before, my name is Rebecca Rogers. I'm R Rogers World on all social media platforms. My name is Bree, Honest Teacher Vibes on all social media platforms. I'm Lauren Woolley, Mrs. Woolley in fifth. And I'm Vinny Thomas, Mr. Thomas English on all social media, apart from Instagram, where it's V Thomas English, because someone stole my name. Looking at you, Instagram, <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> Give Vinny his name back. Free I'm gonna, Vinny Thomas. I'm going to say, I'm going to make t-shirts. <laughs> Free my boy. <laughs> but anyways, we know that with, in, with the case of any job, there are always things that you wish you learned in either school or college or training, whatever it is that you did before, that you kind of make it to the job and you're like, wow, I have absolutely no idea how to handle this or what to do. And that's what we really wanted to talk to you guys about with teaching of things we wish we learned in school, but just didn't at all in the slightest bit <laughs> specifically in like college like things we should have learned mm-hmm. in our teacher programs that yeah they you know neglected to tell us i did yes. an alternate rap program big dog that right. Right. You yeah. no student yes. teaching. you uh-huh. had no student teaching you did your little course that was like super easy got your certificate and they just threw you in the classroom Holy and you ain't know what you was doing just floundering around what is the biggest thing from like your alternate route program trainings that you're like oh, wow i wish i had more training on this um how to deal with them crazy parents i'm like first of all <laughs> how i had to when they call and they be talking crazy i'll be like hold on let me look at this phone because i know they can't be on my phone talking crazy. i know you ain't talking to me you must be talking to somebody but i know it's not me then i'm like bro you can't do that so <laughs> <laughs> you can't talk to them like that but uh time management uh and like the amount of things that we have to do lesson plans and how they are completely unrealistic to yes. what you do in uh-huh. undergrad oh, and what yeah. you do in the alternate route program versus what you actually had to submit yep. for a lesson plan in the yep. classroom that's insane our, our lesson oh sorry go oh ahead. no i was just gonna say at my at my school like going off of the lesson plan thing like at my college at least when i went there i know they've changed the program a lot since i've had student teachers in my classroom now they like highly frowned upon getting any kind of materials from like teachers pay teachers or anything like that really so they, yeah <laughs> like and i was in the elementary ed program and they were like Live on teachers they like teachers. really wanted us to make all of our materials and so i spent hours and hours making different things i didn't have to make right but like um, never <laughs> no i know but like you know i was stupid and so i did it and like now when i'm at like in my actual classroom i'm like it's not at all like that i will hop on teachers pay teachers Man, and be like so where fat. can i find a spelling I, test template so like, right. or whatever you say that i feel like i just had a core memory unlocked of like one of my education professors like calling me on the phone while i was at work as a waitress mm. like i had to excuse myself because my professor kept calling me and she's like it's come to my attention that some of your slides that you submitted for your student teaching stuff were like like a lot of it was taken from another website on teachers pay teachers or something and i would just sat there and i was like can we not do that like is that not a thing to use other people's resources that are available online and she's like no and i'm like then why is it there like yeah and, <laughs> like <laughs> what i find so strange because like i trained in england and we're right. a compl- it's a completely different oh, now yeah. so yeah. when you're doing your like how it works in england is usually you do your undergrad which is three years instead of four because mm-hmm. you know they start us on undergrad stuff when we're still in school so we don't have to pay for it that's oh, another wow. conversation interesting okay. um, and literally after you do your undergrad if you then so i wanted to be an english teacher so i then went and did my one year pgce which is postgraduate certificate in education Mm -hmm. and you have two placements Uh so you have one at one school and it's usually like you have one like public school and one like charter grammar school so you get a mix so you Mm -hmm. can see what setting you'd be good in and it also gives you a difference in like demographics to see like you're at a behavioral school you're at a school that doesn't have as many behaviors um, so that you can get a like a vast like experience basically and each of the schools i went to in england it was very much like the school would follow a really like set curriculum where all of the teachers in this year would teach this text and how it would work is you wouldn't have like a i'm a year seven teacher like you have like seventh grade english teachers Mm -hmm. instead you would be an english teacher and you would teach one high level year seven one low level year eight one year nine one year eleven one year twelve and it would be a mixture and when i tell like like that to american teachers they're like how do you plan for that but Mm -hmm. the difference is everyone collaborates you go into your school you go on the shared drive click english you can find every single lesson made because at the end of every school year i'm moving to england okay because at the end of every school year it is one teacher's job you 
delegate, you spread it out and you'll tag team and you'll look at the curriculum created for that year and you'll adapt it and you'll say, right, what went well, what didn't go well. And each scheme of work for each year would be adapted to high, <laughs> low nice. level. See, and I've, I've been at high <laughs> schools where mind. they've tried yeah. to do something like that. Because um, at my at my first at my first school, the PLT, the the group of world history teachers, like they tried to do something like that, but the curriculum just changes so often that it's hard to like keep on. I like that though. Like but, I wish it was more common. And it also like to me, I just found when I first came here. I was like, I've came from a foreign country, like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm right. British. Um, but at the same time, I was like, I've came here, I've been offered a job. And in England, when you interview for a school, you have to do a practice lesson. That's part of your interview. Oh. Are you well? Yeah. You I and like that. There, there's a school in my area, one school in my area that does that. No other school that I've ever interviewed for, though, does that. And it's usually the bougie, like, That's high, like it's the bougie school. Yeah. <laughs> Just me but like, and to me, I was like, that traumatized me. So it would be you and the person that's also interviewing for the same job would split oh. the one hour class period. You have to both teach your own lesson and they watch you and they observe you and then you do the interview. Okay, no, that's too and much. And it's like a whole thing where like, I was like, I don't want to do this. Oh then I came, I came here thinking it was the same thing. And literally like, to me, it kind of <laughs> blows my mind to think. <laughs> A 30 minute conversation with someone behind a desk makes them think like, yeah, we want to see you in front of, like you're here, you're <laughs> under contract for a whole year. And I'd be like, this is worrying to me. And then like, <laughs> especially like, then I'd start teaching. And I was thinking, okay, like in England you do, um, it's called an NQT, which is newly qualified teacher. Mm -hmm. Used to be one year, now it's two years, mm -hmm. where you have a slightly reduced timetable. So you have more time to be able to meet with like your mentor, because mm -hmm. you have a mentor that helps you. You get signed off on everything. Dang. And there's all of this structure and support. And to me, when I came here, Bruh. I was like, is no one going to check in on me? Like. <laughs> Okay. Like everything you just said just pissed me off. Like, just, I'm moving to England. <laughs> okay, in Ohio, you have a four year resident educator program. So like when after you have your four year bachelor's degree, you get you land your first teaching job. The first year is like you have to do certain tasks or whatever. The second, and you have a mentor through this whole thing, but mm -hmm. your mentor doesn't really do much of anything. Um, they just kind of make sure you're doing like not not to their fault, but like they just don't really do much. Like you could ask them questions and stuff, but they're not right. allowed to help you with the tasks. Oh, wow, so okay. I don't know, but oh, you have point four is? years. You have four years of tasks, and then you have to submit your your resa and it's like the summative assessment for your resident educator program and then they determine whether or not they're going to give you a professional license or if you're going to have to continue and do more yeah. hours for a temporary license or whatever but like no support whatsoever like i totally could see being shocked by that like i would l like i can't imagine how much better life would be and this yeah. goes back to the episode we just did about right. teachers quitting how much better life would be for teachers if they were provided with a lower amount of work not i'm not saying like a lot but like a little bit more time to plan because yeah. you don't have a bag of tools to pull from your first right, year teaching right and you don't have a slew of assignments that you've created over the past five, six years mm -hmm. to pull from either. So to have that, oh my God, how uh, invaluable that would be. And great. I remember I like in my first week, all of these random people kept coming into my class and sitting at the back. <laughs> and I used to be like, oh my gosh, they're trying to check that I can actually do this because they're hiding me off the street. I'm just going from England. <laughs> you know? I remember I went to my head of department and I was like, why are all these random people coming into my classroom? Like, uh, like, am I going to be fired? Like, tell me the truth. And he turns around to me and he's like, Vinny, man, I'm going to be honest with you. They just want to listen to your fancy British accent. <gasps> and I was like, I had 20 people in my room this week. I thought I was going to be fired. They just want to hear me speak. <laughs> I, I, love, I love your American accent. It's <laughs> my like, old head of department was like from Alabama. I had a really like, husky, very like, southern. Yeah, southern American accent. When y'all were in college for, so your, is your undergrad in education? My under, so basically I got screwed over when, uh -oh. so you have to like transfer, um, you have to pay, it's like $600 to have your credentials translated when you move abroad. Mm -hmm. um, I did my PGCE because I knew it was internationally recognized and yeah. I was like oh, long good. term, I know I'm gonna move. Um, some things in England aren't. So um, how it works is because we only do a three year undergrad, mm -hmm. my PGCE actually counted as a third of a master's and I got all A's. So I would have had like a third of my master's done what? because Dude. all 
all of my essays were like a top graded essay. Move. That's awesome. Um, wow. But when I transferred here, I paid money and they were like, well, you only did three years of undergrad. So that one year PGCE, I lost my master's <gasps> credits and oh. now I have a triple major because I had English Lit and Media and Communications and now I have secondary education. So I have a triple major and lost my master's credits when That's I gained it. Did y'all have... Um, both y'all did undergrad? So my yeah. undergrad, education. yeah, my, my undergrad was early childhood education and then I tacked on a fourth and fifth grade endorsement so I could teach up to fifth grade. Okay. So um, for my regular undergrad, uh, it was a four year degree, but like my university, the way they structured their semesters was so stupid. And like, I literally had to take <laughs> a summer. This I did, dumb. I did. Like all four years, I took completely full schedules. And then I also had to do a semester in the summer with four classes so I could graduate in four years. Otherwise, it would have been a five year degree. Dang, and then yeah. my and then I did another summer semester with three classes to get the fourth and fifth grade endorsement. So it was like a whole thing. And then like how it works at my university, it was you had um basically your gen ed classes that you took for the first year mm -hmm. and some of your education classes like the lower level ones and then like once you hit your third year in uh, your undergrad it, you had to have like a certain gpa and you get you can apply to get into upper division mm -hmm. which is like all of the teaching classes and like doing like work in schools and like right, stuff right, like right, that right. so i mean it was pretty intense but it was like they set you up to not graduate in four years because they want your money yep. <laughs> like, so the reason i asked that is because i did an alternate route program mm -hmm. they obviously didn't teach us anything about right. classroom management <laughs> and that kind of stuff but in y'all's undergrad did y'all have a class about classroom management oh it was so not dumb not really yeah, it like not like, the way that it should <laughs> yes, have been I did. see like also for me like so how my college did it is I had to major, I basically had a double major because mm -hmm. I had to major in history, but also get my licensure, which wasn't a major, but it was like a major mm -hmm. on the side. Okay. So like we basically double major and like if you're high school or middle school, you major in your content area. But if okay. you're elementary, you major in like childhood development. Oh, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Okay. like again like you get your license on the side and it's like a double major but it doesn't count as a major mm. but when it comes to student teaching like, like that for my brother my brother is middle school um science and social studies and he it it literally was a degree it was like yes well the, yes like in middle like school our, science and social yes. studies they did they just didn't do it that way at my school because right. like even like nc state right next door did it like completely mm -hmm, different yeah. it's just how, how our program did it um but like even student teaching I don't feel like, like, and I, I used to joke about this all the time to my colleagues, is I don't consider my student teaching year in college, like, student teaching, because I didn't learn anything at yeah. all. Like, not even exaggerating, and, like, I'm really sorry if she's watching this, but, like, my CT, which a cooperating teacher, the teacher mm -hmm. I was paired with in student teaching, she would leave the room when I taught for, like, the first half of the semester. Like, she wouldn't watch me. And I would, like, <laughs> like I need drink a drink from the vending machine. Like, she would go and hang out with Back the teacher in 40 down the okay. hall. <laughs> and, like, I would bring her, like, my my professors want feedback. I want to know how I'm doing. And she, oh, you're doing great. And I would just think, like, you're not watching me. And then my professors came in around midterms. And they were just like, you're not where you need to be. You're not. But, like, they're like, you're not doing what you should be doing. But they wouldn't specify of what I yeah. wasn't doing. It was so weird. And they just like kept telling me that for months, I didn't change anything because I didn't know what to change. And all of a sudden, yeah. one day they're like, that's perfect. And right. I'm like, yeah, and it makes no sense. I didn't make any yeah. changes. We need at a class. All. We need a class in how to unjam the copy machine. Yes. We need a class <laughs> in how to be able to go take a crap real quick when you accidentally eat the cat <laughs> when you eat that cafeteria food because you left your lunch at home we need a class tech, and how tech not support to, yeah we need a tech support after this past year Listen, when we, with the pandemic yeah. i feel like we could work for yeah. google for or some, microsoft some of the classes i took at the time i was like I'm, what the heck am i ever going to use this right. for? like some of the things i was like mm, okay that was kind of useful yeah and then the ones that i thought would be useful are like completely useless right, like so right. yeah. the one class yeah. in, in elementary ed it's really like you have to take a slew of different things so i literally had to take my first year a two semester class that was not i didn't have to take a math class like mm -hmm. usually everyone has to take at least one math i hated that i had to take teaching elementary math and i had like how we learn or how we teach in base 10 so like counting one to ten and then mm -hmm. you make a group of ten and so right. on i had to learn that in base four 
and it's like a whole it like shows you how it is for a kid to See, learn base oh, 10 so it was like interesting that class was it was kind of interesting to see huh. that. So that was cool. And then um, I had to take an elementary. It was like childhood development. I had to take childhood mm-hmm. health. So I literally had to, I took a class from a nursing professor about childhood health. I had to learn about all these di- like diseases and yeah. like symptoms of them. And I'm like, oh, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know how right. you expect me to remember these. But like. It's useful to know. Right. I wish they I, I just wish I could remember. It. I wish they would have did a class in college on teachers' mental health and how to take care of yourself. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. You, especially your first year teaching. I know you mm-hmm. gave like these random like kind of like this is a wellness kind of seminar no. and it's like it's why do just- I need to say I had one where I went to and this woman put a glass down and she was like this is my cup this is how I fill it <laughs> and literally was like this was the trip I went on to Australia and did a slideshow of everything you did <laughs> and she's like this is how you have wellness and I'm like but no, what I'm am I right now? Like, I don't no. care about your uh, Australian I can't afford no. Australia did you come to like help me with my mental health or did you just want to brag about going to Australia right. like no, it's, no, it's no. Like, no, something I wish I would have gotten taught in in school was all the freaking acronyms that there are. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's so like, many there are so many acronyms. And I like I know maybe a handful of them. And then like other times, to- I'm not going to lie. So I, I got put on this new committee this year and it's called NNPS. I now know the name of it. Um, at the beginning of the year when I was put on the committee, I didn't even know what it was called. <laughs> Like, I was like, I'm on the N- M- the NPS. NBC. And I, I'm like, I don't know what it's called, but I'm on a committee for community engagement. Like, that's all I know. <laughs> Sounds and, like Vinny trying to say like, a set of there medicine. There's so <laughs> many. There are so many. And I'm like, how are we supposed to remember all these? I think for me, the main thing that I was like, I remember coming in and I had like next to no sped training whatsoever. Oh, yeah. right. I, like, and I right. came from a foreign country. Someone said 504 and I was like, is that a phone quiz? Is that a zip code? I don't know. <laughs> um, and literally, like, I remember coming in and I looked at my list. At this point, the most I'd ever had in England was one, maybe two IEP sped students in a class. Right. Mm. I looked is at my that not typical? And what? Are like IEPs like they are, typical? but I don't know how they do it. But like, I don't know if it's just like different populations. But like in my experience, like my schools like in England didn't have as high a volume of IEP right. as like America. Each class, right? Yes. Well, I right. also think you know, depending on the district, some some like kids are identified differently in other yeah. districts than you know yeah so i mean it all depends on how districts are identifying kids with ieps but like yeah it, de- it depends on the district how many are in well the and room. i remember i was like because this is what one thing that i wish i would have known mm-hmm. when you go to a district and you apply for a school all of the internal transfers in that district happen first Oh, yeah. So yeah. all of oh, the yeah. great schools that everyone wants to work yeah. for, old Pam's already put in for a transfer oh. there. <laughs> so when you're trying to get into that school district, you can bet you're going into the school that no one in that district wants, wants to, to work to. for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, then you, and you go into it and you're like, oh, I got into my district. And like you're like going all of the, this massive parade about it. And then you get there and everyone's like, welcome, this sucks. <laughs> and, you're like, Thanks. <laughs> and I said this to my wife when she was applying last year. I was like, I'm going to be real with you. When you get in with a district, the likelihood is, unless you are blessed and everyone loves their school and they're situated, you are going to get the bad school in the district because that's your entry. You start at the school with a bad reputation and then you transfer and then you build up. And I think that's something that I wouldn't have expected as a first year teacher. And a a lot of, you know, I, I know they helped us in college, like getting our resumes ready and stuff like that. But like a lot of the stuff I realized when I was applying for jobs is like, it's very much who you know. Yeah. Like, yep. At least in my yeah. area, it was very much who you know to get an interview or to get into the, the school. The school I'm at now is not the case. I had never even heard of the school I'm at before mm-hmm. I applied there. So that was kind of just like happenstance. But like the other like my first school I ever taught at, I literally got my interview because I know the curriculum director. Yeah. And they got me an interview. That, right. like, I'm going to be real. Like, that's why I got my yeah. interview. But like. You know, I I just feel like so much of everything I've learned on the job was more useful to me than any class I sat through yeah. at my university. It's like, why did I not tell you in college how hard your first year of teaching is right. going to be? They just sing you out all yeah. bright eyed and bushy tailed, <laughs> and you're just excited and feel like yeah. you're going to save the world, and you come in, and a kid tells you to shut the F up talking to them, and you're like, what kind of sham are y'all running around here? Y'all didn't tell me it was going to be or like, like this. Or like they preach, so like in elementary ed, you had I had to take literally a child, a, a child classroom management um, class, 
And they we had this whole big project where we had to design a classroom environment, and then we had to. <laughs> They'd be like killing a, me when I do stuff like that. Like, like a binder. <laughs> I had to design a classroom environment. I had to create a classroom management system that included X, Y, and Z, and like <laughs> it's um, so comical. To and me. I look at this project that I made, and I'm like, that would never work in my ever, classroom. Yeah. I'm like, that would never ever work. And I got an A on that. <laughs> like, you know something? <laughs> like I almost even em- embarrassed myself in front of an admin because of something that I was taught so wrongly in college mm-hmm. like in college they my professors literally told me that at the end of the year when you have your summative observation mm-hmm. meeting and like you know you have the standards and you get rated as proficient or accomplished and all the things mm-hmm. my professors told me that I had that we would have to go through every single standard and every single thing and like bring in data to show that we deserve the next higher mark every single time she said we had to do that for every single one and you know my first year teaching i like my first actual year teaching um they had displacements because they just opened a school like down the road and so like i didn't have a real summative observation because Mm -hmm. they were getting ready to let go not let go but like displace and i was one of the teachers displaced that's how i ended up at the other school Mm -hmm. um but like two teachers from every single department so it wasn't a real observation they just kind of said yeah we're happy with you see ya and then like the next year covid we didn't have observations Mm -hmm. and so last spring was my first actual real observation it was my principal who was doing it Mm -hmm. and the one that didn't like me and i showed up trying to argue about every single standard because that's that's what my professor told us we had to do maybe these professors need to go back to the classroom (laughs) for y'all go slow for me i think it needs to like because you don't get trained in how to identify when someone in an admin role yeah. is not doing their job yes. correctly. Yes. You're, you're told you need yeah. to be professional. But like, I remember I had an observation and like, no tea if they're watching this. <laughs> but like, if you're watching I remember this, you're really not. I had an observation where they said to me, they were like, so this isn't on the observation, but you know, I just want to say, I feel like your TikTok personality is better than your teaching personality. <gasps> And I was just like, Bro, this I'm gonna is, throw hands. Like, this like, isn't even on the. Th- and I just remember sitting there thinking, wow, thanks for that. That really helped me, like, grow wow. as a teacher. Like, and then it was just like, and then it went into a story being like, I turned around to a student today and was like, oh, you've got Mr. Thomas. And they're like, yeah. And she was like, yeah, he's the fun TikTok teacher. And they were like, oh, yeah, he's not really like that in class. And that made me sad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my gosh. Yes. And this is making me sad now. But, like, like, you shouldn't, like, you shouldn't have, like, you should be more professional in the classroom, right? Like, yeah, could, in the classroom, it's not all like, yeah. hey, everybody. Could like, you imagine? The day. next day, you should have came in dressed up as Ursula. Oh, That's what you should have I'm, I'm just there, like, coming in dressed as Ursula, you know, just like, oh, yeah, we're doing all my cement today. Like, excuse me. <laughs> 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 came in dressed as Woody and Buzz. What the hell? Uh, I need to change my costume. But like, you don't know that. Like, as a new mm-hmm. teacher, you go in and you feel like literally a deer in headlights. Yeah. You don't know, right. and yeah. you're like, I can't rock the boat. And it's usually nine times out of ten, you're like opposite a veteran teacher that's really like, you don't need to do any of this. And you're like, oh, but I think I do. <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's just right. Like, or like the veteran teacher, <laughs> the veteran teacher, like speaks their mind all the time and has no qualms about going up in arms against oh, something. Oh, no and qualms. And you sit there and you're like, <laughs> and you're like, I will say nothing all year. <laughs> like, My first year teaching, I was scared that they, apparently your lesson plan was supposed to be submitted by Thursday at 3.45. <laughs> Oh, the first time I oh ever my. had to submit my lesson plan, it was like 3.30 and I wasn't done. And I was literally crying because I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get in trouble. This yeah. lesson plan is going to be submitted. And the next day, one of the teachers came in and was like, girl, I hadn't even thought about my lesson plan yet. I was like, I thought they were due yesterday at 3.45. She said, like, girl, we'll never turn them lesson plans in at 3.45. I was so <laughs> mad because I was like crying the day before because I didn't know. Listen, my first year teaching, um, luckily... The school I was at had three vacancies all in second grade. So mm-hmm. three of us were all first year teachers. Oh, oh God. And so oh. we, we kind of like band together to try and help each other. So the one, uh, the first time we had to turn in lesson plans, my district required, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Our lesson plans were literally like 20 pages long for language Each arts. Week? 
Yes, for Dang. language arts and for math. Dang. So I like the first time we ever had to make them, we literally went to Starbucks together and we sat there for seven hours oh on a Sunday gosh. writing our lesson plans. I was like, this is hell. Why did I pick this job? Okay. And like, See, you like, know, but like it's the week. things like that, like you don't realize even like, OK, data data we have no idea Bro, what do they do with the I data don't even know i don't know y'all take all this data and bother me make my pressure high at these meetings for data I ain't never seen nothing that y'all do with this data they look at it and, and, and i just remember like, analyze trash. it right. Right. they file 13 it <laughs> going back to like Vinny talking about being a deer in headlights and i know it's something that like a lot of like you don't even think about and maybe it's just me i don't know but when my first year teaching one of the first staff meetings that they ever had they're like okay so here's here's the deal about insurance and the retirement stuff and like you have to pick which plan and like i had never that stuff even so thought confusing. about it like no one explained that to me how that worked. they're talking about 401ks and i'm like i don't even know what that is as like i just graduated college i was just Hold hired on. a couple weeks ago you didn't know what a 401k was at the friend. time i didn't oh, now i do but like i didn't know i knew what a 401k was i have a 403b and i didn't know what that was what the hell is that it's just a tax shelter account. So oh, like, see, it's okay. a secondary retirement account. I don't know what a 401 even explain <laughs> like, that to me. <laughs> they just like had this meeting and they're like, okay, here's the deal with the insurance. But like no one even, no one told me that we were even having that kind of meeting. Apparently everyone just knew, oh yeah, first meeting of the year is like insurance. I didn't know what it was. I had no idea like what I was supposed to expect. No one explained it to me. And I was just like, what okay, is this? Like, I wish funny? we talked about this in school. You want to know something funny? What, what? I did to myself my, what, 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 my what? first year of teaching. <laughs> so, <laughs> going off of what you said, the finance stuff, I didn't have a clue about that. And uh, right. so the 403B that I have, um, the guy like the, the guy who's the financial advisor comes around to the school and he talks to all of the teachers and if they want to change anything, cool. If they don't, whatever. So the first year, he was like helping me set up my 403B. And he's like, do you still live at home? And I was like, yeah, I'm tw I'm 22. I don't got a house. And so <laughs> he's like, okay, okay, that's good. So you don't have a house payment. And he's like, so, you know, right now, since you, you know, you don't have as many bills as you might have in the future, now would be a really good time to put, you know, to be aggressive with your account and put whatever you, you know, you can in there. And I thought because I'm stupid, I thought Bless. that the 403B was my only retirement. I didn't know I was getting STRS. Oh, God. So they take 15% of your paycheck for STRS. Mm -hmm. I was putting an additional 15% into my 403B. So 30% of my paycheck was going into my oh, retirement fund. And they won't let you and, change it. No. Well, <laughs> so then I... I went, I got my first couple paychecks and it was like, I was making like six, $700 a paycheck. And I was like, mom, I'm like, I can barely afford my car payment. I'm like, how am I going to, I'm like, what do I do? And I'm like, I'm like crying <laughs> no. and I'm looking at my paycheck. I'm like, this can't be right. I'm like, what am I making here? And then I, you know, Jordan, my husband went to school for business and he happened to be like in a finance class at the time. And he was looking over my paycheck. He's like, you're putting double into retirement right now. It makes me mad because they know. They, uh, when they knew. be talking to them yeah. teachers. And then the next year. They know. He came back and I was like, yeah, we're changing this to 1%. Okay. And he was like, are you sure? Because because they make commission yeah, off of that. Yeah, because I should have right. cussed you out last year. When right. You <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm sure. And Jordan was like, just tell him I'm a financial advisor. He's not. But like, just lie. Yeah. And so I, I was like. Yeah, I'm like, my, my fiance is a financial advisor and I, you know, he advised me that I don't need to be putting that much into this. And he's like, oh, he's a financial advisor? I'll mark that in your account. I didn't know that. Oh, he's my gosh. He's never me again. Y'all, that makes me so frustrated because it there are a lot of teachers that when they sit down with those people yep. to do that stuff, they do all this fancy talking. And then when you get your paycheck, you be low like that. Don't let these people swindle you into signing up for all this stuff. Yeah. And you they give you on like insurance not. too. Like uh, my own friend Sharon, she's like, bless her. She's Sharon! Sharon. I love she's, Sharon. she's like a little bit older. So like when she has her like annual insurance with the district, they're like oh so have you ever thought about the fact that you might get cancer and she's like well not really but now i'm worried <laughs> and it would be like like they'd say to me they're like do you need vision i'm like well i've never needed glasses in my life and they're like oh boy if you need it and i'm just like they're what? ridiculous, okay, okay. Okay. They're ridiculous. <laughs> but okay they get me on those though because jordan has ulcerative colitis yeah. so like i yeah. i have the cancer rider i have the hospitalization rider mm -hmm. i buy all that because i'm like yeah. It's a possibility. I'm like, but like the fact that they do that to 
everybody. Yeah. Only and there was a the car. Right. They're like, oh, but you know what happens if you, you know, you know, you just like fell down a flight of stairs Maybe and then you broke every bone in your body. I'm what like, if you just, you know, <laughs> keel over and die? What then? Yeah, you gotta have life place. insurance to cover like in front of your kids. Oh no, my god, that's too much. <laughs> but they like they really should have like a they life skills, to. and that might even go back to high school. There should be a yes. life skills class in high school. High skill. High school. And I <laughs> life skills in high school. And that goes with the paycheck because I think when you first get your proper like first job out of school you think oh wow even it like you know teacher salary I think my starting was like 40k in Arizona mm-hmm. and I remember thinking like $40,000 this is gonna be so much money oh. I'm loaded because like I'd never <laughs> been used for that like, <laughs> I was, I'm rich I was subbing before and bringing in like 20k a year so I was like oh my gosh like, I'm gonna be making it rain and then like the pension hits the insurance yeah. hits and then yeah. you're like they take all this stuff and out. you're literally like I looked at my paycheck and was like I made a hundred bucks more this month than I did subbing yeah. and like subbing I could leave at the end of the day and be done and now I can't right. and I'm like this yeah, is so yeah. sad yeah I think I, like at any given time I have eight or nine hundred dollars in de- deductions on it my paycheck so and it's mad. yeah but like it's it's not like I'm just throwing random money into stuff like it's, right. it's right. stuff I need yeah and it's sad that I had no idea about that my first year but like the good thing was now like when I get my yearly statement for my my 403b I'm like look how much money I have in there <laughs> <laughs> like I suffered for a year but it's all good <laughs> kind of going back to like things that we wish that we learned in school like that we just kind of learned on the fly imagine this one of my best friends we've been best friends since we were 13 Mm -hmm. um she does elementary but during her student teaching year um the like she she was with her ct her cooperating Mm -hmm. teacher and the teacher next door was told by the school hey we've had you on like an action plan for like this many years in a row we're not going to renew your contract next year personal improvement plan yes and so, <laughs> so the teacher literally said, oh, you're not renewing. This was maybe, what, in April? The teacher said, you're not renewing my contract? Fine, I'm done, and just left. She just quit on the spot, like, left. But my friend, um, she literally was pulled from her student teaching classroom by the principal and was like, hey, by the way, we're going to contact your school. We're going to make you graduate early, and you're just going to, like, go be the teacher right now. Congratulations. You're Can now they a make her graduate son. early? They didn't, like, she accepted it. Like, she could have obviously said no, I, oh, I think. Okay. But they're like, yeah, we're just going to work it out with your school and you're going to graduate a couple months early and be officially done and you're just now a long-term sub. And, like, she never even got to finish student teaching. Wow. I, Isn't that, like... I don't know how that's a thing. That they did do all, don't you have to take all the exams? Did she have to do all that early? Um, I think she just took it as like because she wasn't hired as a full time teacher. She was hired as a long term sub. So she still graduated. She still did the two months, but they let her be a teacher before she graduated. Kind of. She didn't have to go to her classes at school anymore. Like she just did That's teaching. Crazy. My university would the, never. Man, it was union very would never. My school and would. Let me tell you, we went in to like look at her new classroom. It was the most disgusting thing. Yeah, they be leaving I've them classrooms ever nasty. Seen. Like it was. It was bad. It, it took us days yeah, to get through the grind and like, oh. And like, let's not even talk about like the junk that like, you know, gets left be- left behind. When teachers retire, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of them either will take their stuff and sell it or they just don't care and they want to leave, leave it. And they just leave it. They walk out. And so you like have to go through all of their crap on top of your crap. And like, it's like, it takes, you know, your first, your first year, if you're like me and you move every year. Uh, oh, it bless. takes That's a terrible. long time to to get your classroom set up. It's That's <laughs> terrible. Well, on that note, we're going to end on that note. But let us know in the comments. <laughs> I want to know what you wish that you would have uh, learned in college that you didn't. But we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much Yay! for watching. And go follow us on all of our socials, Teachers Off Duty Podcast. And we will see you next time. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Thank you.